Okay guys and gals, for this video we're going to do a review on the dial calipers. If you're using digital calipers, that's okay. But my preference is the dial, and I have a couple of reasons why I prefer the dial. Those reasons are, is one, I don't have to worry about a battery going south. Not only do I not have to worry about that, but I don't have to worry about keeping an extra battery around. I don't have to remember where that battery's at. I don't have to make the purchase of that battery. So, these will work just as they're supposed to, provided you always take care of them in just the same way you have to take care of the digital, all right? And I can honestly say I don't remember ever having a pair of dial calipers filming, okay? The other reason I prefer the dial is because, like we say, you don't need a battery. And I've always looked at reloading my own ammunition as a way to sustain myself in whatever situation I'm in. And if I have a pair of digital and I don't have a battery, I'm done. And with these, I can keep trucking. Okay. Now, I have uh, other videos referencing the dial calipers on my channel, but periodically, I like to include these in on the different reloading series that I do. That way, the new reloader doesn't have to search for the video. So here we go. So first of all, what we have is we have the beam, all right? Think of the beam as a ruler. And on the ruler, we have a scale. And in just a minute, I'll tell you how to reference that scale. So the first thing that we want to learn is this little wheel that I'm turning with my right index finger is called a clamp screw. That is what opens and closes your jaws and extends your depth gauge. What you don't want to do is you don't want to use your fingers to close your jaws because that's not taking care of your calipers. You only want to use the clamp screw like that. So the three tools that your calipers have is you have the large jaws, the small jaws, and the depth gauge. This is what each one of them do. The large, large jaws, they can make a outside diameter measurement like that, okay? Or a length or width measurement, you know, the externals of an object like that. The small jaws they're for like the inside diameter of an object or the internal measurements of an object. You'll find that you won't really use small jaws. I don't use it that often, but they're handy sometimes. Okay. Then we have our depth gauge. It measures the depth of something. Now when you are measuring the depth on something that is very minimal, as an example, on the next video, we'll be measuring the pass flush measurement of our primer. When you're measuring something that's that minute, you want to do it in multiples of three. Because sometimes that first measurement might not be the measurement that it really is. It could be an erroneous reading. So I'm going to go something like this. So as an example, when you're measuring that first primer, What, that's eight thousandths, okay? Not quite eight. Six. Just a hair over six. We call that six and a half thousandths. In a minute, I'll show you how to read that. So, we have an average of three there, six, seven, and eight. So we could say it's about seven, okay? So, th that's how you would use that. So now, let's talk about how this all works. So first of all, what we have around the gauge is we have a bezel. It's that ring, rim such as some watches have a bezel. 
and this is our bezel nut. When we loosen the bezel nut, we can begin rotating our bezel like that. To zero your calipers, you're going to open them up like this, and then you're going to return them back with the jaws shut in the closed position. And then you're going to take this bezel and you're going to take the zero on the dial and you're going to align it perfectly to your needle. And with the jaw closed, with the zero perfect to the needle, that is now zeroed. They're calibrated. You're going to tighten the bezel nut like that. Now we have a lock screw. What the lock screw is for is if I have a if I'm measuring something of a particular length and I want to keep the jaw stationary, I can just gently lock that and now I can't move it and they'll stay there just precisely just like that. So that's how they work. So now I'm going to close it and recheck my zero. I look pretty good. And now I'm going to open them and we're going to talk about how we read the scale. The dial of this is a continuation of the scale. First of all, I want you to think in terms of a dollar bill. The dollar is the whole number. Just like a ruler that you used in school, that number one is our whole number one, that number two is the whole number two, and number three is the whole number three. Okay? You'll notice that your whole numbers have a little bit of a rise to them above these tenths numbers. The tenths numbers sit lower onto the scale. So here's our tenths starting at zero. We have one dime, two dime, three dimes, four dimes, five dimes, or five tenths. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten would be one. So there's one inch, two inch, and three inch. So we have our whole number one, and then our tenths is each of those numbers. This scale goes all the way to a thousandths. We don't care about anything past a thousandths. So from the tenths to go to the hundredths, our hundredths are right here on the dial. We got ten hundred, twenty hundred, thirty hundred, forty hundred. See, this dial is a continuation of this scale. So where are the thousandths? The thousandths are each one of these little lines. For every ten thousandths, we have ten hundredths or one hundredths. Does that make sense? So here's our one inch, one tenths, one hundredths, and all those little lines are our thousandths. So now let's let's run the scale a little bit with this dial and let's learn how to bring it all together. So I'm going to reach around the camcorder. I apologize. I'm at a disadvantage but we'll try our best. So first of all let's set this up for a one inch but before we do that I want you to know that for these to be set at one inch do you see the needle and the zero? The needle has to be dead on to zero when our reference line here on the jaws is dead even with the whole number one. So I'm going to bring this is our reference line watch our reference line I'm going to bring it up to the hole number one on the beam and watch the needle see I'm a thousandths off that's technically that's that's not one inch when I bring the needle to one that is exactly one inch now one one tenth inch watch my reference I'm taking it to the tenths now watch the needle. The reference line looks like it's at one and one tenths, but the needle has to come up to zero. And that is perfectly one and one tenths. 
Now we want one and one hundredths. Well, we have 1.1 one, one, one hundredths. 1.1 one, one, one hundredths. Now let's get 1.1 one, one, one thousandths. There we go. So if we want 2.250 inches, let's take our reference line. There's two point two what do we say two point two five zero so we got two point two five zero two point two five zero okay so now that is how you work with your dial calipers and the trick is see the hard part isn't learning them the hard part is applying it so do it repeatedly and do it slow you're always going to adjust it to the first whole number you're after then you're going to dial it into the tenths and you'll dial it into the hundredths, and then you'll dial it into the thousands, And that's how you make them work. So, okay, guys, I'm not a pro, but that's what's always worked for me. So now we have our powder measure set up. So now we need to start with working with two of our four components. I wonder what that will be. Guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next one.